In this video, we're going to be looking at the Game Sir G8 Galileo versus the Razer Kishi Ultra to help you decide which one is the best for you. Let's get wild. All right, so first what we're gonna do is talk about what these controllers have in common. One of the first things is that both of these have a headphone jack. They have two programmable switches. They both have USB-C connections with pass-through charging, extra grips on the back for better handling. They both offer virtual touch support on Android devices. When comparing to the backbone, both of these controllers are a lot larger and more of a uh, full size controller. And that's where a lot of the similarities kind of fall off. There are some little things like here, here and there, like a, a menu button, but I, I would, I'd imagine that's pretty common and should be standard on every controller. So let's just go ahead and break down the differences between the two. With the GameSir G8, the cost of the controller starts at $79.99. So that's uh, 80 bucks US. Supports phones with a length of 110 through 185 millimeters. There are Hall Effect joysticks on these controllers. A tilting type C port. And you can just kind of move and tilt. That way you don't have to worry about uh, you breaking this little stick here while trying to place your phone inside of it. One cool little feature is that the controller allows you to remove both face plates. And if there is something that you don't like about the joystick, you can just pop it out and change it with one that comes with the controller if you buy a brand new. Alrighty, so getting the controller put back together here. A few other things I want to call out button combinations for the GameSir G8. So there are a few button combinations that you can do to enable some functionalities that are built for the controller. So first one's going to be the uh, hair trigger um, that you can do in the back here. You can uh, enable or disable hair triggers. You also have the ability to uh, switch or remap your buttons on the fly on the actual controller. You also have turbo functionality with this as well. Also a little cool thing, uh, you can adjust the volume, increase and decrease the volume. And then also you have uh, a couple other features that are actually on the website, being able to switch into a PlayStation mode and Android mode. And as we already discussed, the virtual touch mode or what GameSir calls the G touch mode. Also, there is this little button down here. I'm not sure if you can see that, but uh, right beside of the function mode where you enable all that, all the functions and stuff that we just got through talking about, there is a capture button right next to it. This will allow you to take screenshots um, of whatever app you're in, whatever you know game you're playing. I, unable to actually do recordings while pressing this button, which I thought was kind of odd, um, but kind of wish you would be able to actually do some type of a screen recording while pressing this button. But I, looking at the documentation right now, I don't see any uh, mention of this button except for the fact that it's just a capture button. So they don't really detail any uh, functions that you can do with this button. And uh, what I got out of it was just a screenshot. So, and the last thing is that the controller, has, while we talked about both of these controllers having those programmable switches, these are in the back of the controller, uh, opposed to at the top where a few, uh, I think for all of Razer's recent Kishi controllers, their micro uh, programmable switches are at the top near the near the trigger, near the bumper buttons. Uh, for me personally, it's the, I prefer them in the back because that's where my index, my, not my index, my middle finger sets when I'm using the controller. So that's pretty much it for the GameSir controller and a lot of the functions and features that it has. Let's go ahead and look at the Razer Kishi Ultra. Alrighty, looking at the Razer Kishi Ultra here, uh, the device is at $149.99 US, so it's about $150. Bucks. The maximum allowable device length is going to be 210 millimeters. Because if you guys don't know, this supports iPad mini, 
with the USB-C port and um, also some smaller tablets that are around that same uh, size as the iPad mini. This controller does offer haptic feedback on the bottoms here that uh, feel pretty good when playing games. Also what's called the Chroma RGB light strips here that you can kind of see. I don't have a controller attached currently, but once we get a controller attached, you'll, you'll see what that looks like. If you haven't seen that, it looks pretty good. Another benefit to this controller is that you can play on Windows PCs. You can't play on Mac, uh, just on Windows. But if you have a Windows device and don't feel like you already, you know, you spent 150 bucks on a controller and you don't have any other controller laying around, uh, you can, you know, pick this up and whip this out for some Elden Ring or something. Razer does say that the pass through charging on the bottom here is 15 watt pass through. That's something that really isn't called out on another on a lot of other controllers. So I'm guessing this uh, this is going to be able to charge your device a lot quicker compared to the other controllers on the list. Now, while the GameSir G8 does have this feature, the micro switches, macro switches um, are at the top, uh, not on the back. So I do prefer them on the back. Um, it just feels a little bit better when I'm holding the controller and just tapping it, you know, with with the rest of my fingers that are doing nothing uh, while I'm holding the controller compared to the top, because the top, obviously, I'm these are going to be my triggers unless I want to, like, claw it or do something weird like that to try to uh, use the the additional buttons here at the top but it is a nice feature to have that way you can switch to you know switch your your jump button to something you know up here that way you don't have to move your finger off just to press a button to jump and another thing to call out with the razor kishi ultra the capture button on here only does screen recordings uh, unlike the g8 it uh you are you know you're allowed to actually record your screen when you press this button it doesn't do screenshots from my testing but like like i said before I, i'd rather it do the screen recording than just a screenshot so now overall my choice is mainly going to be tied down to things like price and uh, usability and a lot, a lot of the features um between these two controllers i'm going to go with the game sir on this um uh, for a lot of different reasons one compared to the price of the razor kishi at 150 dollars, this is only 80 dollars us so that's a huge difference in price um you get still a similar you know full size controller the buttons are slightly smaller than the razor but not by too much you this is still good for, you know, if you're if you're a person with larger hands, if you are a person that has, you know, extremely big hands, you might want to go with this because I this does feel a lot better in the hand overall compared to the game Sir G8, but not by that much to where it's worth the one hundred and fifty dollars, something that, you know, the Razer doesn't have uh, the hall stick sticks the hall stick sticks the the um hall effect sticks that a lot of people have come to you know slowly implement and put inside of their controllers which is great because with the controller using hall effect it uses magnets so you don't have to worry about your controller sticks wearing out over time which is what causes stick drift in the first place this is something that the razor also does not have i believe they have some type of uh, different technology on it but unfortunately i mean that isn't as well as tested as Hall Effect um, at the moment. So, you know, only time will tell if the Razer will get stick drift with whatever uh, hardware functions that they're using or hardware features they're using for their sticks, but it's not Hall Effect. So I'm gonna have to go with the GameSir G8. And in some recent news, there is now a new style of the GameSir G8, which is called the GameSir G8 Plus. And it is a Bluetooth style controller, so it is going to be missing the uh, USB, USB-C port here. And it also is going to be missing the headphone jack because it's just a Bluetooth controller. But the reason for the Plus is because now it supports iPad mini and certain Android devices as well, uh, similar to, you know, 
the the iPad mini size. So it's really a direct comparison uh, to the Razer Kishi Ultra in terms of that extra big feature that Razer was touting, which was I definitely did not expect to see uh, happen so fast but I'm glad it's here. I know uh, when the GameStar G8 did come out, a lot of people on YouTube, well, not a lot of people, there are a few people and some people on Reddit, uh, you know, going through and, and un taking the whole controller apart and uh, increasing the length that the controller can expand to. Um, that is, you know, something that would probably void your warranty on the controller. So it's nice that GameStar did see that, and they were like, you know what? How about we just make a controller that just does that without forwarding your warranty? And the best thing about the G8 Plus is that it's at the same cost as the regular G8. It, uh, it's, so I'm not sure, you know, what these extra features, the haptics and the uh, RGB, it's just not for me personally, the way I look at it between this and now the G8 Plus, it's not really worth it, you know? And the fact that, you know, it is Bluetooth, that you know kind of means that you could use a if you have an older ipad mini with the lightning port you don't have to worry about the USB C port here because well it's just bluetooth so you just stick it in there and you're good to go but that is going to be the end of the video i hope you guys did enjoy it if you did give this video a like as it helps the channel and subscribe if you want to see more mobile gaming content i'll catch you guys in the next one stay wild